Hi, my name is Spiro Christopoulos. I'm the school captain here at Trinity in 2020. Today, I'm joined by a member of the class of 1978 who has gone on to make his mark in banking, sports management, university lecturing and the media, holding roles as CEO, board director and chairman along the way in the corporate world. A key figure in mentoring young Australians and bringing leaders into focus through an extensive series of TV interviews covering people from all facets of life, including names such as Charlie Teo, Tim Costello, Gay Waterhouse and the first man to land on the moon, Neil Armstrong. He went on to write the best-selling book, The Naked CEO, and he is no other than Mr. Alex Malley. Alex, good morning. Good thanks for joining us. How are you, Spiro? Good, thanks. It's great to be here with you. Thanks for being great here this morning you. in our nice little make do studio. Very good. Wasn't here in 1978. That's it. Leads perfectly to my first question. Um, you started your Trinity journey back in 1967 at the prep school campus at Strathfield, much like myself, um, and you were here all the way through until the end of your schooling in 1978. Walking through the school this morning and coming to Quad today, what are some of the biggest differences you see beyond just the buildings, which I'm sure have changed quite a bit since yeah. you were here anyway? Look, they have, there's no question. The facilities for the students now is, are just brilliant, which they weren't in my day. Mm. But it's just seeing the sophistication, the opportunities, the diversity, mm. um, female teachers, which I think there was one when I was, really? a, when I was a student. Wow. And I'm pleased to say my daughter's now one of them. Definitely, yeah. But, it, but it's just the sophistication, the diversity, mm. um, the cultural mix and the expectations of the boys and their behaviour is mm. extraordinary and really impressive. They say one thing, you know, we had our school officers retreat back last year and it was sort of brought up, what do you love most about Trinity? And one common thread was the diversity in yeah. cultures. Yeah. You know, you can walk into a classroom, you've got someone of Asian descent and Greek and yeah. Italian and Lebanese and we all mix and get on so well. Trinity has never been short of great mentors and leaders. Headmaster whilst you were at the school, Mr Roderick West, was a great influence and mentor to you. It's quite clearly expressed in the first few pages of your book on the front cover. I, I like that a lot. What else or who else, um, when you look back on your Trinity journey, did you see as a great mentor and influence to you? during your Well, time well firstly, Rod West. Mm. Um, he suspended me in 1978 for leaving the school, which we can come back to later. Yeah. But his generosity of spirit when I, we went through that experience together in year 12 mm. and then after school he made every effort to reconnect with me and make me feel part of the school. Yeah. And so for, for me his forgiveness, his generosity of spirit mm. was fantastic. Mm. Uh, another one's Ian Moore who actually was at school when I was just finishing and everyone wanted to be in Ian Moore's class. Mm. And when I became a teacher, that was what I wanted. Everyone to want to come to my class, not me have to drag them in. Yeah. So Ian Moore was a great mentor as well. Mm. And Keith Sanders, who was the prep school headmaster yeah. many years ago, who ended up um, uh, dealing with my wedding at the school chapel oh, many wow. years later. Yeah. So you got married in the yeah. chapel here, yeah. that's amazing, yeah. yeah. So they're linked to the school, to you know? Trinity. That's it, yeah, yeah, they do, that's the thing. Once you leave here, yeah. you're sort of always linked. And Mr Moore, you know, touching on him, he's been here for 40 plus years and he's a great teacher and a great inspirer, even to this day, and I can say that from experience with yeah. my cohort and my year group, so. And yeah. one other thing about Ian Moore is, mm. and it's a gift, is energy. Definitely, yeah. You can be smart and you mm. can be keen, but mm. if you don't have energy, yeah. energy's, the, energy's the game and energy comes with passion. Yeah. You've got to search for your passion. Big, big tip. Big he life found lesson. it. He found yeah, he it. did. And he thrives in that teaching environment. And he, he comes does. to school every day looking forward to teach. So, yeah. yeah, he's great. He's still here. Can't believe it all these years <laughs> later. He's doing very, very well for himself. If you were to choose three, three things that Trinity taught you, which have contributed to the person you are today and remained with you through your journey yep. since leaving school, what are three things the school has taught you? Well, the first one I'd say is friendships. So I mm. finished in 78 and our year group, still stays in pretty good contact. So yeah. I think in your life, friendship's mm. so important. Mm. The second is just the integrity of doing the best you can. And the third thing was forgiveness. So I found that this school, in spite of my behaviour at times, had a capacity to forgive mm. because ultimately the school's about nurturing and developing young men and uh, it continues to do that probably far better than it did in my day. Yeah, but under you know, great leadership with yeah. Rod West. You Absolutely. Know, it did that and it still continues to this day, yeah. definitely. You mentioned in your book, The Naked CEO, bestseller, that through some of the hard times experienced whilst at school, your friends, and importantly, your mother, yeah. were a secure place for you. Also, you talk about reflecting on the opportunity, which you may have wasted at times whilst here at Trinity. 
what advice do you give to young Trinitarians in today's world on how to stay focused, motivated, and make the most of the great opportunities they have at the school, and also keeping people like friends and family close to you at yeah. school? Well, look, firstly, my mum, she had mm. ongoing depression. And there'd be many schoolboys that have impacts in their families and in the wider community. Mm. Her capacity to keep fighting back and coming home to raise the family was a great inspiration to me. So mm. that's really important. And when troubles go on in your life personally, a broader set of friends really, really matters. Mm. Sometimes a friend can be more independent than a family member, but at the core of it, your family is really important. Mm. So it's really important that you be yourself. Yeah. And sometimes at school you've got to sort of conform a little bit, I understand that. Mm. But ultimately, if your leaning's towards drama, your leaning's towards anything else, you've got to let everyone know around you that's where your passion is. So that if and when the time comes you need their support, yeah. it's not a total surprise. Mm. Be yourself. Mm. You're, you are the only brand in the world like you. Yeah. So amplify it. And make it known to Absolutely. the community. And keeping your friends close as well. You spoke about how you've still got a connection, but yes. they do play an important role in that ongoing day-to-day -day mentoring and Well, support. as recently as this morning, I went to assembly for the first time in 40 years. Yeah. And as I was there, I took two photos mm. and sent them to my best mate from Trinity to this day, this morning. So wow. that's how long these friendships last. Yeah. And I can't drive past Trinity without stopping the car mm. and just pausing and reflecting on the mm. great times I had here. It was, it was a home away from home for me. Yeah, and I think, you know, especially when you go all the way through from PK all the way, you do feel that connection. It's just like another family. Yeah, I've absolutely. got an address tomorrow morning to the Year 7 father-son breakfast, and I just I speak about how I'm going from one home to another, one family to another, yeah. because that's the reality, and it's a great feel and vibe here at Trinity. Fabulous. Mm. Moving through now to sort of your career in journalism and interviewing, sort of the right. flip side. Now, I'm, yep. I'm interviewing you about journalism. You can see the passion change right. immediately. Yeah, that's it. It's a great passion of mine, and I, I love you yeah. know, learning about the media and stuff like that. Um, you personally, Alex, have had the privilege to interview lots of different people, from sport to politics to entertainment to business. Is there one person in particular that stood out to you and why? That's a tough one, mm -hmm. um, and there's probably top three or four that I can't separate, but yeah. I guess if I had to because of my childhood and my age, mm. Happy Days was a television show in America with uh, the guy called The Fonz, who was the, the Fonz, cool yeah. dude, and everyone in the world who were male was wearing a leather jacket to be like him. Mm. Um, and then I find myself sitting in his home in L.A., interviewing wow. him in his lounge room with his grandchildren running around, running around the room, mm. but just an incredibly humble guy and... Uh, mm. uh, D dyslexic, couldn't read his script um, wow. and people would read it to him and then he'd memorise it and do it in his own way mm. and uh, couldn't ride a motorbike because of his dyslexia wow. and yet everyone thought he was the great motorbike rider so lovely guy, honest, humble and focused. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and even Dad, when I was preparing this interview, he's sort of like, oh, Alex interviewed the Fonz, and yeah. you know he's got the little leather jacket move, and he's That's so it. well known. So absolutely, you know, he's a, he was an icon of that era. And to sit down in his house, I'll have to meet your dad. We can talk That's more it. about it. Definitely, yeah, he's a a, a guru. Or he was a an icon in that generation, a guru to a lot he of was. people. So he was. It means a lot. To, he went know, to a down. he went to a shopping centre one day, mm. and they said, we, we just need you to do a little promotion. And 40,000 people turned up at the shopping centre and they had to actually bring security and police wow. so that they could part their way so he could walk through. That's the sort of hit he was mm. at the time. Big impact on the world. For me, one of the fascinating people that you've interviewed during your In Conversation series was Rudy Giuliani. Now, for those of you that don't know him, he, as a mayor, pretty much single-handedly turned around uh, the city of New York with his zero-tolerance policy. What stood out to you in his character and his DNA that contributed to him being really one of the most influential people in America during the 90s? He was a thinker, mm. and when he wanted to run as mayor, he lost twice before he won. So mm. I'm, big on, I'm big on resilience and fighting back. Yeah. Um, and what he did was collect all of these experts around crime, mm. and he used to, this is before he became mayor, and he used to meet them once a month and ask them how they could stop crime on, pl on trains and all areas of New York. Mm. And they gave him a series of ideas on how to do it. And when he became mayor, he just immediately executed those plans. Wow. 
and went on to become, you know, the world's most famous mayor. Mm. Not only that, of course, he was the one of the reasons why Trump came through to become president. Yeah. And I remember when I finished the interview, all his minders were behind a glass door, so I could see them, but uh, Rudy couldn't because his back was to them. Mm. And they kept going like this to me and time because I was going too long with the interview, but he was having a good time, I was having a good time. So I thought, who cares? And um, at the end of it, I said, did you have a good time? And I gave him my business card and I said, when you visit me for an interview, it's like being my home. Did you have a good time? He said, I had a lovely time. I said, I don't suppose you can ask Don if I could have an interview. He said, oh. I'll talk to him. Wow. Well, Hasn't that's happened on yet, the cards. anyway, you never know. I think even... Never know. I don't know if the Q&A program was around when you were at the school with Mr Moore, but economics the Q&A... The beginnings of it was, yeah. 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 So we, we still get people in and have he Q&As. He had the Prime Minister, I think, around the time that uh, we were there. Yeah, I think... Couldn't he, believe he didn't want to meet me, mate. really. <laughs> well, now he would, that? I mean... Can you believe that? Look at the success story, you know, of Alex Malley, who, you know, you never know. Neil Armstrong was one of the la one of last century's greatest individual figures. He was the first man to walk on the moon, and you had a unique experience to get to know him and sit down and have, you know, a conversation. He wasn't a man for the media. He didn't like revealing sort of the secrets, but you were lucky enough to interview him as part of the Channel 10 series. What parts of his character made him so unique and one of the, rem the most remarkable men of his generation. I'll, I'll come to that, but just, you know, when you're chasing <coughs> Trump, mm. just one thing, I, I just started in the organisation as CEO and I wanted the staff to go the next level. Mm. And if, as a leader, you want to go the next level, you have to show them you're willing to take the chance so that they'll do as you do, not do as you say. Mm. And I said, who would we interview <coughs> around the world who's, who's the world's most respected leader? And they put a whiteboard of leaders. Mm. Someone put Neil Armstrong. I said, well, we'll do that. And they said, you don't just say, we'll do it. Mm. Like, he doesn't do interviews. And I said, well, let's try. So we flew to the States. Mm. He told me he, he doesn't do interviews. And I said, Neil, I'm a parent of many children. Uh, I'm a teacher by, by heart. Mm. And the world needs to hear the story of the impossible mission. Would mm. you do it? And he said, OK. So he wow. did an interview for the first and only time in his life mm. and, and passed away a year and a day later. And that is the only record of his life in existence. Mm. So, you know, Trinity's part of that. And I had a whole series of Trinity boys come to meet him wow. um, while he was in Australia. Wow. But as to his characteristics, his integrity, his humility was frightening. He was so humble. Mm. Generosity of spirit mm. and the most alive eyes I can think of anyone I've ever met. Mm. And he was 81. And I said, how old are you? And he said, I'm celebrating my... 51st anniversary of my 30th birthday, which was a very positive way of saying yeah, he's 81. For sure. So his kindness, his spirit, mm. and he's deferring to everyone else but himself. And because the Apollo mission, they didn't know he was going to be the skipper of that. They, they picked him when Apollo 4 was up and said he'll be, he'll be the commander of that one. They didn't know that was going to be the one that went to the moon. So he thinks it's just all a coincidence. It's amazing. But amazing man and big loss to the world. Huge Definitely, yeah. World. And he made such an impact on the world and, you mm. know, especially in astronomy and space. And yep. and you were lucky enough to have that one-off interview. I know? was, and Trinity's connected to it forever. Yeah, I was going to say, I was over at the prep school, I don't know what year he at came time, out. At right, that time, but I remember, yeah, 2011, the school captain of prep, the school captain of junior and some leaders actually That's went right. to meet him. And I'm just in awe of the yeah. opportunity which they got. And you, know, and you know what he said to me? He said, what do you want me to tell them? I said, you're kidding? Just tell them about what was achieved. And mm. Because it's in those days, it mm. was all about um, follow, your, follow your dream and go hard and take the risk. And it was 90% 90, 90 vision, 10% risk management world then. Now mm. it's 90% risk management, 10% yep. vision. Yeah. So widen your life to be 90% vision, 10% mm. risk management. You're going to fall over a few times, but when you get up, you'll have learnt something. Yeah particularly about laughing at yourself when you make a mistake, keep mm. going. And don't just dwell on that, Absolutely. that risk. Or, yep. But, you know, great opportunity. And also coming back to the link with Trinity, as an old boy, you've created more opportunities and inspired other, you know, young men yep. through the school. And it's an important thing which... Well, when, you know, when Mum was sick and things were really difficult at home, mm. I would come to the school and feel really safe here. Mm. Um, and I remember Milton Chuez, um, a former headmaster and teacher here, yeah said to me one day when I came to speak to the prefects, you know, 
we didn't know whether to make you school captain or expel you. We couldn't be sure. Because I spent a lot of time joking and laughing here because that was my outlet. Yeah. And so when someone's been that nice to you for 18 of your 18 first thereabout years, you can't not drive past the school and feel a really mm. close connection to it. Yeah. Always and forever, you know. And you spoke at the prefect's uh, induction service I a did. few years ago. I did. Tell us a bit about that quickly. Well, I just told them that, you know, the opportunity they had to be leaders here was enormous. Mm. I told them to be extraordinarily grateful to their parents mm. who were paying a lot of money to give them that opportunity. Yeah. And that having been suspended from school and to be in the position I was at that time, don't be defined by what you think you are then. Just keep growing and keep trying, keep mm. pushing, and anything's possible, right? All that can happen is someone can say no. I'm very unattractive. You can see that. I'm middle-aged uh, and I don't know. No, you, you I always good. ask the question. Mm. I don't care if someone says no. I just keep coming. Yeah. And eventually the universe gets so tired of seeing you that it says yes. Mm. And so for me, Armstrong was one of those things where I'd pushed and pushed so many times to do something I wanted to do that was really big. Yeah. And eventually the universe said, you know what, this guy's going to keep coming. Mm. So let's give him this Armstrong wow. thing. And we got yeah. it. So never give up. Keep pushing. Mm. Don't take anything personally. Yeah. And laugh at yourself more than anyone else. Yeah. And they can't laugh at you then. <laughs> it's so. good. You know, you need to maintain a good sense of humour. Yeah, and just, you absolutely. Know, stay as upbeat and positive as yep. you can. Yep. And especially in the outlet of school like Particularly it was for you. look like me. Trust me. I don't know. You, you look pretty good. I mean, for you your age, you've You've got to be you've polite. Kept... You're interviewing me. Like, come on. <laughs> Greek to Greek. Greek, I mean, we, yeah. we have to have some yeah, sort yeah. of, yeah, That's acceptance. Yes. <laughs> um, you emphasise how important it is to step outside of your comfort zone in your book. Where, during your Trinity journey, did the school help you do this and how? Now, I'm just going to make reference quickly again. I'm not sure if that trip to the city um, in the bright orange Datsun with the Afro was one of those, but can you tell us about how they helped you with that? Yeah, look, it was it was it was a day at school where we didn't have classes formally, and mm. and a few. I had my sister's car, which was a bright orange Datsun, and uh, I said to the boys, one of them said, "I've got a girlfriend," and he was less attractive than me, and I thought it's impossible, so I wanted to verify this story. So for me, it was yeah. a verification trip. Yeah, yeah. So we went out in the Datsun, mm. found out that he did have a girlfriend, which was a bit disappointing for me, and then when we came back. Um, one of the maths teachers, Mr Francis, saw us running across the oval to come back to school and told Mr West, who then suspended us, and that suspension letter, of course, is in the book. Yeah. Um, but what, what I learnt was that at Trinity in my day, hmm. there was the top echelon kids who did really well, there was the middle range of children, there were the ones who were really struggling. And... I was able to live through the three groups, but I was tending to be in the middle. Yeah. So Trinity at that time did its best to be good and balanced for everyone. Mm. I think it's much better at that now. And if it sees someone has a particular talent that may not be scholastic, there's a place for them at Trinity. Mm. Probably not as flexible in my day. So mm. I found that Trinity was a place that I could have fun, I could learn, mm. and I could have a range of activities and friends. But ultimately it was safe and mm. I think to be anywhere as a child and feel safe is, is paramount. That's the key. Yeah, You know, absolutely. parents, when they send their kids to school knowing they're yep. safe, I mean, it absolutely. keeps them satisfied. And safe that people want to nurture you, safe that your mm. parents love you and, and want you to have this opportunity. Yeah. So to all your cohorts at Trinity, just don't waste the opportunity. You know, mm. have fun within limits mm. and behave in my daughter's class. But the That's rest it. of you can <laughs> of just course. go and have a yeah. good time. I mean, you touched on something there which I want to draw out a bit more in terms of opportunities, um, and it's not just about the scholastic element. Like, personally for me, um, it's probably a suitable time to, you know, say a thank you is to the AV department and the media department here who have sort of nurtured me and allowed me to chase a passion. Yeah. If I didn't have the support of the school, it's I fantastic. wouldn't. You know, and I'm so appreciative to all the team who, you know, put this set together and help me through and, you know, other staff like Mr Moore for organising these interviews because yep. you're only here once and you've got to make the most of it. And I'd like to thank the school and everyone involved in allowing me to have it's these great, opportunities, it's opportunity. you know. It's not every day that people want to do this, but I've got the desire, so the school definitely And you've got a face for television, oh, so I don't you're know. on your way. I think I've got a face for radio. You're on your way. Yeah, you never know. Um, getting organised and getting things done is one of the key chapters in your book. What are the best habits and routines that you can suggest to the boys which will put them in good stead for their future? 
and during sort of year 12, year 11, year 10, the senior years as well? Yeah, well, one of them, the first one's a physical thing, and that's mm. to walk every morning. Right. So I walk every morning, and to this day, I might do now 15 k's a morning because I've got more time. Mm. But no matter how busy I was, no matter what country I was working in, I had to do an hour walk every morning. It allowed me to order my mind, mm. run through issues that may be important, and find out that ultimately everything has a simple solution if you bother thinking it through. So you've got to have that me time to walk. That's, yeah. I think, it's amazing what it does to your life. Mm. And you, you come home organised and ready, whereas people who sleep in don't. So yeah. don't sleep in, mm. walk early, mm. make your bed, because that's the first activity of the day that makes you feel like you've done something. Yeah. And share your emotions with trusted people. Mm. And, and that doesn't mean just family, mm. but amongst friends that you feel a closer connection to, whatever you might be feeling inside that might be positive or negative, share it with someone, get mm. it out of your system. Mm. That's an incredibly important thing. And be yourself. Yeah. And as easy as that sounds, it can be mm. really challenging. So mm. that's why get into the habit of being yourself and showing who you are from this mm. age, yeah. from a young age, and you'll get better at it all the time. You are the mm. only person of your type in the world. Mm. That is a singular brand, amplify it. Definitely a great analogy. You're the brand, you're the only brand. You are. And going back on sort of the making the bed thing and that sense of accomplishment, um, my housemaster, Mr Foley, he's got this little video that he shows us once a year and encourages the boys to make the bed, not just for the thing of you're helping your mum or you're helping your parents out by doing yes. it. It's that sense of starting the day and accomplishing something. Correctly. And with that mentality. Yep. And also on mental health. And do you make your bed? I do every day, yeah. Excellent. Gee, and I was it's worried good. you'd say no after all that impressive no, commentary. No, nah, I do. I, I always make a point of getting up and sort of starting the day fresh and early. Get up earlier. That's good. Take your time a little bit. I don't walk every day. I might take you up on that. I do sport. No, you've got to walk, you know, you gotta walk in the morning to start yeah. your day and clear your head. Yeah. And on that mental health and speaking up, you know, it's important. It really you know, is. To, to get things off your chest and talk to people. Most major dramas that happen in people's life is they've bottled it up. Mm. And 90% of the time, what was a small thing you bottled up has become so large in your mind and body mm. that it's almost impossible to overcome. Yeah. And yet if you just told someone, just spoke to someone, mm. you know, there's always someone out there who loves and cares about you, just make sure they're around you. And speak up, yeah. definitely, yeah. You've emphasised how important networking is within a school and university context in your book. What advice can you give Trinitarians how to stay connected with their fellow students and how important that will be for them going forward into the future? When I used to lecture at Macquarie Uni and there were mm. 600 kids in a lecture theatre, yeah. I used to always say in the early lectures, you know you're sitting in a room, someone on your left or right is going to be a Prime Minister someone's going to be a CEO, someone's mm. going to be an envoy to the United Nations, mm. and one day you're going to be watching television with your family and you'll see that boy or girl that was sitting next to mm. and think, why didn't I get to know them? Mm. So at school you, you get to know as many people as you can every day, say hello to someone else at Trinity that you've never met, yeah. just get to know their first name, mm. and that begins a process of a network. And... Mm. You don't go out to form a network for the sake of forming a network because people see right through that. Yeah. Just about having a genuine <laughs> interest in people mm. and their first name. Yeah. And so if you get to know a lot more kids at Trinity, you go to uni, every day at uni, sit with someone new. Mm. When I was lecturing, I, I saw one guy was away one day and I said to him the next day, out of 600 kids, mm. I said, you weren't at the lecture yesterday. He said, that's unbelievable. How would you know that? I said, it's magical powers. Yeah. And it turned out that he sat in the same seat every week. And, and I said, so from now on, sit somewhere else and I won't notice if you have a day off. There you go. But the point is, you talk to everyone. Yeah. Uh, Trinity Boys Parents mm. is another opportunity to meet yep. people who yep. may help you get that mm. first job. Mm. Mm. Um, parents of university mates yep. are people who work. Yeah. These, these are all around you. Mm. So just get around, talk to a different person every day. And it's about that magic genuine ha interest. Magic happens. Yeah. But do not do it for the sake of the exercise, no. do it because you genuinely want to mm. meet someone new every day. Mm. And even parents, you know, to touch on that, even welcoming year sevens and just mingling with people in a room, there are a lot of Absolutely. sort of heavy hitters and you don't know where they could 
help That's you right. in the future. But having that interest and that connection yeah. is where it all starts. Just because, like you know, people. There, yeah. there'll, t- there'll come times in your life, <coughs> there will definitely come times in your life where people will let you down. Mm. Um, and, in, and at times they might even get in your way and do it on purpose. Mm. But you can't lose your trust in people. You've yeah. always got to presume first, mm. everyone's good, and I'm going to always trust in that. Mm. Sometimes I'll get a slap in the face as a result, but, you know, I've got a big face, I can cope. Yeah. It's not about being personally hurt or anything. It's about I believe in people, I'm going to keep meeting them. Mm. Sometimes I'll be disappointed, but mostly I won't. Mostly it'll be a great experience. And I get better and better at communicating. Because yeah. if I could wish anything of my kids, be great communicators. Mm-hmm. If you're a great communicator, yeah. life happens. Mm. You meet people, you talk to people, you're confident. Life happens, mate. You get things done, yeah. And I, when I always knew <coughs> I wanted to do some television journalism, mm. I always knew that. And I, if you have the dream in the back of your mind mm. and you see an opportunity come one day, you know it's there because the, the dream's still in your head and you know that's the opportunity. Now's my time. I'll grab mm. it. It's about the brain working over time. Stay there, keep the big dreams. Tell Mm. one person a big (coughs) dream so that occasionally they say, How are you going with it? They keep you accountable. Yeah, you need that as well with your goals to keep people, yeah. Yeah. People to keep you accountable. Final question, Alex, a bit more of a light hearted one. I've watched a lot of your work over the years, I've seen plenty of your interviews. You do a good job. Um, and you manage to get the best out of your interviewees. You do such a good job in sort of relaxing them, getting them in the element and getting so much out of them. Is there any advice you can give to a young, young up-and-coming uh, media personality from Trinity, an old boy like myself, that you know, you'd know you give some tips on, on well, a career and that in the future? You're already well ahead of where I was at your age, so mm. you're on your way. Yeah. But the one thing I learnt, and mm. I used to do live television and and in interviews, right? Yeah. And when I did live television, what I noticed was the, the journalist interviewing me wasn't listening to what I was answering. They were ready to give me the next question. Yeah. And so I could tell, and so I just worked with that and dealt with it. But as an interviewee, it was clearly, you know, almost disrespectful that you're not even yeah. listening. Why are you yeah. asking me the question? For sure. So I learned mm. when I interviewed mm. to watch the eyes not always listen to the voice. Yeah. So when I'd do the research, I'd find something about you, right? And I'd think, that's fantastic. Mm. He'll love this. Yeah. And when I get to that question, your eyes are dead as a doornail and you mm. just answer the question. I think a good interviewer says, his eyes aren't up on this. He's not excited about this. Get on to another topic. Mm. Because I've got to watch their movement. So people sometimes are polite. They'll say things and you, the, the voice will drone on. But the eyes always tell the truth. So watch mm. the eyes. If you think something's interesting and they don't, get out of there. Yeah. And go to where their eyes light up. And if their mm. eyes light up on something you thought was small, keep going down that mm. road because keep that's what's going to bring out the person. Yeah. And almost mm. every interview I did prior to the interview, if I'd met them just before the interview, they'd say, do not ask this, 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 this and this. Do mm. not ask that. No worries. We go in the interview, we start chatting. I asked every one of them. They answered every one of them and they loved it. Yeah. Because I've built trust with the eyes. It's the eyes. Even though you can hardly see mine. And I think, um, you know, you spoke about in answering that question, listening to your interview, and for me, this morning, more than anything, has been a great opportunity just to gain some insight from you. I've flicked through the book and I've read some things, but to sit down and actually talk to you, I've got a lot out of the, the experience. Thank you. I've learnt lots. The pleasure's all mine, um, mate. It's great it's, to see young people yeah. being nurtured. It's mm. great to see great teachers and yeah. support systems. and definitely. And when you become famous and mm. you're on television and live television globally, yeah. I'm expecting to get a, an interview with you, all right? Done. All right. I think I can, I'll, take, I'll take you up on that I'll one. I'll it For in. For sure, we'll lock Done. it in. So when it happens, in conversation, or we'll change, we'll, we'll Whatever put a spin you want on to it, call it. But we'll have it, we'll Done. sit and have a chat Locked on in. live TV. But Alex, thanks very much for your time this morning. Pleasure, mate. Appreciate it. And uh, all the best.